Lord God, thank you for this day to worship you. Put your hands together. Bless you, our King of Kings, God. Thank you for this new year you've given us, Lord, to worship you. Holy Spirit, fill this place. We bless you.
Holy Spirit, you're in this room, in our hearts, Lord God, speak to us here today. We worship you, the King of the Kings, the Lord of the Lords, the Lamb of God slain for us.
A thousand generations falling down in worship. We sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, we sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is Elias. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and possession. Your name stands above. and is and is to come.
We've seen what you can do. Oh, God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before, in greater measure, you'll do again. There's no prison wall you can't break through. No mountain you can't move. All things are possible. And there's no broken body you can't raise. No soul that you can't save. All things are possible. The darkest night.
stronghold will crumble I hear the chains hit the ground Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out Father, that is our prayer this morning that you would pour out your spirit Lord, but please let us not just be those who, who ask for your spirit to be poured out. And then when you begin to do it, we say, no, 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 not that way. The way that I want it. God, when you pour out your spirit, you do it your way, on your terms, in your timing, for your glory, not for ours. And so God, just help us to be those people who say, God, pour out your spirit, whatever that looks like. Pour it out in me, pour it out in my church, pour it out in my life, pour it out in my family. And God, don't let me be the thing that gets in the way of you pouring out your spirit. Father, I pray that as we have another beautiful opportunity to dive into your word and to take what it says and apply it to our lives, God, that we would not leave the same way we came in. That every soul in this room would hear from the throne room of God this morning, would hear your words God, it would change them. It would change all of us. God, I know you're faithful to do that. And you say it all throughout scripture. He who has an ear, let him hear. And so God, I pray that our ears and our hearts and our minds would be perked up this morning to say, God, what do you have for us today? God, use your church, use your people. Fill us, God, with your spirit. Cause revival to take place in our hearts first and then see that wildfire spread to our community beyond. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. It's in Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Go ahead and grab a seat and turn your attention to the screens. Hi, everyone. It's great to be worshiping with you today. I'm Jeff Schubert, and I get to serve as one of the pastors here at CCO. We wanna take a moment in this part of our service to focus on giving back to God. I'm reminded that how and where I spend my money exposes what really owns my heart. The Bible tells us where our treasure is, there our heart is. As disciples of Jesus, we want to look and love more like Jesus. And this requires us to trust God in every area of our lives, especially how we view our money and our stuff. Giving shows God we trust Him. If you're new with us here today, relax. Please don't feel any obligation to give. You're our guests, and we're glad you're here. Would you pray together with me at this time? Lord Jesus, I am so grateful for each and every person here in this room and online, Lord. And I pray that you would show them more and more about how you've given them so much and how easy it is as we learn to live and love more like Jesus to become more generous. I pray all these things, Father, and the rest of this service in your name. Amen. Hey everyone, I'm Josh. And I'm Zach. And welcome to Calvary Oceanside. It's been a while, what, since like, all the way last year since we've seen you all. Last year, this last week was last year. Dad jokes aside, we're glad to see you all. If this is your first time to CCO, welcome. And if you haven't already, please fill out our Digital Connect card on the CCO app or on our website so we can get in touch with you. Or visit one of our friendly welcome team members so we can get to know you more personally. The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Are you really going to make the hard choices to change your life? We had 40,000 in student loans, uh -huh. 17,000 in cars. I owned a rental property. We had a line of credit, just stuff. We had 16 credit cards. The proverb says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes. We paid off $83,000. Wow! When desire comes. $144,000. When desire comes. $450,000 in the last seven years. Wow! It is the tree of life. God says this is how you get out of debt. You gotta run, 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 run. There is no doubt that this process called Financial Peace University works. The only question is whether you're gonna be involved. And so if you haven't signed up yet, now is the time. If you want to tell your money where to go and not the other way around, then sign up for Financial Peace University. In this nine lesson course, FPU teaches you how to save emergencies, pay off debt fast, spend wisely, and invest in your future. 
For over 25 years, Dave Ramsey teaches biblical, common sense money principles that work every time. Our first class will be meeting in just a few weeks. Cost is $5 per person, and yes, childcare will be available, so please register online and leave the stress of money behind you in 2023. So come see Pastor Dan Kettle at the tables after service for more information. Hey, CCO women, you are invited for a ladies' night out trivia night. Join us next Friday in the Family Sanctuary for a casual night of fun and fellowship as you battle to see who has the greatest knowledge of trivia. Come on your own or come as a team. Childcare will be provided, but pre-registration is required. For more info, visit the women's table outside after service or contact Brenda. A more vibrant marriage is possible when it's built on a foundation of active faith. So join us this Thursday for relatable video sessions and dynamic group discussions in our new Vertical Marriage Study. Free childcare is available with registration, so sign up online or come see Pastor Dave at the tables for more information. Join us for the first Starting Point Step 1 class of 2023. Our Step 1 Get Connected class is a one-day orientation that gives you a chance to hear about what we stand for and the mission we are on as a church. Join us next Sunday for this important class, and then you'll be invited to have lunch at Pastor Dan's home with his family. Register online or come see one of our welcome team members outside at the tables for more info. Grief Share is a 13-week session designed to help you navigate through dealing with the loss of a loved one. It's a group who can help walk alongside you in one of life's most difficult experiences through encouragement, support, and practical lessons to let you know you are not alone. They will meet beginning next Saturday in Room D, so email Trish at the address below for more information. Thanks for joining us here at CCO this weekend. We're super excited to have you here for not just the beginning of the new year, but also the beginning of our new study, Building Healthy Habits. We're really excited for it. Please visit our website to find out even more about financial peace, the ladies trivia night, the new marriage study, starting point, and grief share. We love you, church. Have a blessed week. Amen, amen. Good morning, happy new year to you guys. If you weren't here last week, it is the new year, amen. You guys doing okay? All right, all right, all right, I'll give you one. Um, I just wanted to encourage you, if you have not, again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. If you have not taken starting point class, uh, that is one of the most crucial things that you can do as a part of the body at Calvary Oceanside to understand that we're not just a church that's calling you to come back next week. There's a lot of mission that the Lord has called us to, and we want you to be a part of that. In order to be part of that, you gotta know what it is. And so we really encourage you. Again, I'm not sure if the class is full. I might get a memo after this service to say the class is full. What are you doing? We can't take any more signups, which is okay. We, we do the offer this class once a month and then afterwards come over to our home. It's just a sweet time to, to get to know you guys, to uh, really connect on a one-on-one -on -one level. And so we'd love to have you do that. With that said, why don't you guys stand up and greet someone in the love of Jesus tonight. If you're socially awkward, just sit down, you're fine. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, I am uh, thoroughly excited to be starting this new series uh, called Building Healthy Habits in the Home. My name is Dan. I'm blessed to be one of the pastors here. If you don't have a Bible, I'd encourage you to download the CCO app and we have the fill-in notes, the Bible that we use. If you don't want those, you want an analog version, there's tables in the corners of the room that have analog Bibles. You can go ahead and grab one of those or your favorite Bible app you're more than welcome to use. I'm really excited about what we're doing today and what we're gonna be doing for the next 10 weeks. And so if you would, would you join me in a word of prayer before we dive in together? Father, thank you so much again for your word, for your grace upon us, uh, Lord, just that you are Lord of all things. And Lord, as we tackle this, uh, I believe, critical subject of building healthy habits in our home, that you would just be in and through this entire series. God, open our hearts, minds, and ears to hear from you today. It's in Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen and amen. Let me start out with a quote. The American philosopher, writer, and historian, Will Durant, once said, you are what you repeatedly do. Our habits are what shape our lives. They say you are what you eat, and the reality is you are your habits. If you show me someone with good habits, I'm gonna show you someone who, for the better part, is successful. You show me someone with terrible habits, I'm gonna show you someone who is unsuccessful. We're diving into this series 
called Building Healthy Habits in the Home. And there's a lot of precedent for this in scripture. One of the things that I believe the Lord would want us to do in this new year, because truthfully, all of us have that mindset. It's the new year, a new you, right? And so we set up for ourselves ideals and parameters and goals that we start out the year with saying, I want to do this this year. Here's what I aim to attain. And listen, that's good stuff. But there's a a book, and I've said this title before because I think it's one of the most brilliant titles. Greg Laurie wrote a book uh, several years ago called, I'm Going on a Diet Tomorrow and Other Lies We Tell Ourselves. (laughs) Right? I love the title of that book because it really encapsulates the truth about our intentions. We really want to, like there's not a single person in here today that if I sat down and I said, hey, listen, what's one thing? What's half a dozen things that you want to change? You wouldn't have them already ready. Because you know, there's things that we know about our lives, the habits that we have, the the different things that we do on a daily basis that we're saying, you know what? I wish I could change that. And so I want to take this time, this series, to dive into how we are to create healthy habits in our home first, because I truly believe that the kingdom of God is really pictured in the household. In your home, again, no matter what life stage you're in, whether you're a child under parents, whether you're parents that have kids, maybe even grandkids, whether you're a single adult with roommates, whether you're divorced, whether you're a single parent, your home is a picture of what the church should be in the community. The health of our church, listen church, the health of this local body of Christ is connected intrinsically to the health of your home. When our homes are healthy, our church is healthy. With that being said, I want to take you to a scripture that I want to start out with. If you guys have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. If you don't have a Bible, it'll be on the screens. But it says this, Discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is only of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life that is to come. Bodily exercise profits a little bit. Now, for those of y'all who are yoked in the room, you're like, profits me more than most, right? I get it. I used to be there. I used to lift pretty heavy. But there's that mindset that happens when we work out. Here's what I know about working out. If you stop working out, even for a short time, you lose a lot, right? You ever done that? Even when you're dieting, you, you diet and you're like, man, I'm down 10 pounds. You eat a donut and you gain 17. Like, what happened? But the, so the idea is, listen, you can do all those things and there's nothing wrong with exercise. In fact, it's a good thing. The problem is, it's not as important as godly exercise. It's recognizing that we need to discipline ourselves into these healthy habits because Truly, as we need to recognize and the, the, the notion of what bu- the Bible has called us to, the root word of disciple is discipline. Now, I know that word's kind of like a swear word for many. It's like discipline. I don't like that word, right? Again, maybe you were disciplined. And again, it was coming on you from others when you were younger. Maybe you've felt disciplined by the Lord sometimes. You don't really like it. But at the same time, when we already are disciplined or have disciplined ourselves, there's a lot to be said for discipline. It does produce quite a few things. So this series, Building Healthy Habits in Our Home, I wanna take a moment to kind of go back. I want a 30,000 foot view. This week is the baseline and it's really kind of the why behind what we're doing. We're talking about why. Why do we need this series? Why is it that we need to do this? Why is it that we need to go through that? But in order to do that, I want to define some of my terms. Because again, I wrote a book just recently on language. And if I'm saying something here and you're hearing something different, we may agree and nod, but we're thinking two different things. So the first thing I want to discuss is the word habit. What is a habit? A habit is very clear. It's a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one 
that is hard to give up. We all have habits, and these are, some of them are good, some of them are bad. But the idea of a habit, and I want you to understand this, is a habit, when they are bad, man, they're bad. Right, some of you guys, you have bad habits. You got habits that you've had for a long time. You're trying to kick them and I get it. Some of y'all in this series are just gonna get back to baseline and that's okay. But the converse side to that is if you have a good habit, it says it's hard to give up. So if you develop good habits, not just through this series, but beyond, what it means is when you develop healthy habits, they're also hard to break. We need to, we should, discipline ourselves, discipline our bodies, be disciples of Jesus who recognize having good habits is a good thing. Because habits aren't bad. I think a lot of times we get this idea that habits are, are, are bad and they're not because let's be honest, there's good habits and there's habits that you've had, that you've done this morning that I am so grateful for. <laughs> Some of you have the habit, praise God, of brushing your teeth, Right? Some of you have the habit of brushing your teeth after you've had your morning coffee, which is even a double blessing, <laughs> right? Because everybody knows when you've had coffee, maybe you got a toothbrush for Christmas. Somebody's telling you something, <laughs> right? You got a whole case of gum, okay? Blessings, but what's that, what's that all about, right? Brushing your teeth is good. Some of you read your Bible habitually. That's good. Some of you have a, a, a great habit of showering, right? It's a great habit. Some of you have more of like a common sense habit, like not wearing socks and sandals. That's a beautiful common sense habit that you need to get into. Again, if somebody hasn't told you, here I am to, to let you know. But let me define something else. What is a household? What is a household? The definition, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, the term simply refer refers to all of the people who occupy a housing unit. So your home, your household is simply the people in your dwelling. Um, in the New Testament, you see this often. We, we went through this a little bit in the Gospel of Luke when we look at the life and ministry of Jesus. There were many times where Jesus would go preach the gospel, people would get saved, and it says they immediately went to their oikos, which in the Greek, again, in English, the Greek word means their household. All of those people that were living in the home, and that could have been kids and grandkids and adults, and it could have been servants, maid servants, uh, the people who run the livestock. I mean, it could have been everyone, but it says they immediately went home and told their household. So it's everyone who occupies the dwelling. So we need to build healthy habits, things that are hard to break in the place that we spend a lot of our time. Why? Because I'll tell you one of the things that I think we need to recognize is that we're not going to become healthy by simply going to church for an hour and a half a week, right? R going to church, again, that's a good habit. I love, yeah, the community, the body, going to church, I get it. But do you understand that you have 160 plus hours the rest of the week? And that's the critical nature of what the church needs to be. You are defined not by the hour and a half you spend at church, but by the 160 plus hours you spend away from here. That really defines who you are in Christ. So the things that we need to recognize is that all of the habits that we have define and reflect our relationship with God. As we heard from Dave Ramsey, your money is a direct reflection of your relationship with God, how you spend it, how you use it, Again, you've heard me say many times that your wallet and your heart are really intertwined, aren't they? Right, you show me your bank account, where your money goes, I'm gonna show you, show you where your heart is, right? It's very intertwined. Your temperament, how you respond to stressful situations, that's a reflection on your relationship to God. And I'm not saying all the time. I'm not saying you can't have a, a whoops. I'm not saying you can't have a moment where you have to go, oh, that wasn't right and I repent. But if you're constantly lashing out in anger at everything, the relationship with the Lord is not going okay. Your marriage relationship, how you treat your spouse, a direct reflection of your relationship with God. Now, I know some of you are already hearing this going, oh, this is gonna be a rough series. Hold on, don't, don't, don't check out just yet. Your singleness, think about this, single people. The way you treat the opposite sex while you're single directly reflects your relationship with God. Those of you who are single, maybe older, maybe divorced, maybe single outside of the home, living with roommates, how you treat the people in your home 
is a direct reflection on your relationship with the Lord. Why? Because all of these are spiritual disciplines and they have underlying spiritual significance. So as I said, today I wanna talk about why. I've already come up with what I think are some questions because some of these questions I've already been asked. So I wanna make sure everyone gets the answer for these questions. The first question is, why are we doing another topical series and not getting into the Bible? Okay. I know, I can feel all the condemnation already hitting me. There is, again, as a Calvary Chapel, there's nothing that we love more than going through the word verse by verse, expositorily teaching what God has said through his written word. But the truth of the matter is, there's not a book that talks about building healthy habits in our home, right? There's a lot of concepts in scripture. We're gonna pull those all out, kind of like Proverbs, right? We went through Proverbs. We didn't go that verse by verse because if you read through Proverbs verse by verse, it's a little bit disjointed, right? It doesn't flow like a normal. So we pull those into some of the topics and we discuss them and go through them. I am gonna do first the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm really excited for the book of 1 Corinthians after this 10 week series. But the reason that I wanna do this is because I wanna be able to speak to the culture. Right now, who would agree that the family, the household is under attack in our culture? This is critical. And I cannot wait for these concepts to just come up as I'm going through scripture. I need to tackle them all at once. The Lord has given me some uh, direction and I'll, I'll speak that in the next why, but this is critical that we're doing this. I believe it's so vitally important to the health of our church and not to armchair quarterback and say, oh, I wish I would have talked about it when the iron was hot, but our culture is attacking families. It's attacking the household. It's, a, it's under attack from everywhere. And I don't have time to get into all of that today, but suffice it to say, there's enough attack going on in our culture around the household that we really need to do this right now. But why now? Why right now? I wanna share a story with you real quick. And this is kind of uh, just taking you back a little bit. Um, not too far, but uh, for those of you that don't know, um, I oversee another organization called the Bonhoeffer Project and we have a podcast. And about uh, a little over six months, earlier last year, um, I had on our podcast, me and another pastor do this. Um, we, we had on the CEO of Awanas. If you don't know what Awanas is, it's kind of like we do on our Wednesday night Calvary Kids Club memorization of scripture for kids. It's, it's, a, it's a midweek kids uh, fun and scripture. It's really, like I said, quite close to what we do at Calvary Kids Club. And so we had Matt on and he's uh, a, a brother in Christ and we do a lot of stuff together in, in mutual uh, circles that we kind of cross paths. And so we had him on the podcast. And in that time I was wrestling. Let me, again, I just wanna bring you with me real quick. One of the, the roles that I have here at the church is to really kind of lick my finger and put my finger in the wind to see the spiritual temperature. Where, where are the winds of change and the culture going? What's happening? What's coming down the pipe? What do we need to be prepared for? And I saw this early on that the family is under attack, that the relationship between parents and children are under, are under attack, that there's so much media influence with our kids and in our homes. And that's a place of attack. It's another front of the issue that I started to think very seriously about what do we need to do to fortify the household in this church? And so I started with these ideas and me and my wife were thinking about actually starting a class on Thursday nights, really kind of in line with this on building healthy habits in your home. And we were really kind of working on it and we were kind of laying out the, the work and what it's gonna do. And we're gonna have it on Thursday nights along with the marriage and all this other stuff. So I'm interviewing Matt Markins and we're talking about family discipleship. We're talking about the habits in your home. We're talking about how it is that we are to fundamentally build up the church in this area. And so I asked him a question that I thought was like a softball question that all he was gonna do is answer what I'm already planning and thinking. And I just pat myself on the back with his answer going, oh, we're doing it right. And so I asked him, Matt, thanks so much for your answer. I got a deeper question. How do we facilitate and build this stuff up in our churches? Softball question. I think he's just gonna say, man, you gotta, you gotta have more classes. You gotta talk about it. You gotta just draw people into this critical need in our church. And this is what he said. You can watch the video. He goes, 
Yeah, you can't do it in a class. And like I went from a smile, like ready to be like, amen, that's what I thought, to uh, what do you mean? And he said this, and again, you, you, you're, you're going to recognize this, hopefully. He said, you can't do it in a class. And I was like, uh, explain. And he just asked me one question, which made all the sense. He goes, Dan, who shows up to the classes? And I just so easily answered, everyone who's already doing it. People don't want to go to a marriage class because their marriage is in crisis. They want to go to a marriage class because things are good and they want to get better. When things are bad, very rarely do people go because they don't want to feel the condemnation, right? Who wants to go to a class on healthy habits in the home and feel condemned that their parenting is terrible, right? Who wants to go and be like, oh my gosh, I've got terrible habits. Great class, church. I don't want there to be a discouragement. I want this to be an encouragement. And so what Matt then finished with saying, he said, you can't teach it in a class. You have to teach it to your church. Because the people who wouldn't come to the class need to hear this right now. I truly believe that the health of this church is intrinsically intertwined with the home. And if your homes are not healthy, this church will not be healthy. If you are not healthy in the homes, we will not be a healthy and thriving church. We are called to be a community of faith and it starts here and it starts now. And we cannot expect even as parents and the disciple making relationship. I mean, obviously we understand disciple making happens all over the place. Parents, you understand, you've heard me for any length of time, you know that as a parent, it is your duty to disciple your children. But if there's any kids in here, do you know that you can actually disciple your parents? Kids are like, what? Do you know how many times, again, when they didn't know it, my kids were discipling me because they were literally the voice of the Lord. The Lord was speaking through them and I'm like, oh Lord. Husbands, wives, did you know that that marriage relationship is a beautiful picture of discipleship? You're growing with one another, sharpening one another, calling each other out on different areas, encouraging one another in other areas, growing together. Follow me as I follow Christ. It's beautiful. Grandparents, do you know you can disciple your grandchildren? Right? There's all of these relationships that need to take place. And if we miss it, we're really going to miss it. We need to be that community of faith. What's another why? Why? I wanna share with you some statistics and actually we're gonna go through a lot of statistics in this series. Barna Research recently did a survey. This is a 2018 survey. They surveyed 2,347 US practicing adults. So this is really, these are Christians and these Christians are in a sense being asked a question about the spiritual vibrancy in their homes. Okay, so again, just put it in your mind, these are Christians Self-proclaimed, people who say, I'm a Christian, and this is the vibrancy in their home. So 25% say that their house, their household is a vibrant household. Some of you go, okay, what's a vibrant household? Let me read this. A vibrant household, these households talk about God and faith together weekly, pray together every day or two, read the Bible together weekly and welcome non-family visitors at least several times per month. That's a spiritually vibrant home. The next one is devotional, 33%. A devotional home, these households talk about God or faith together weekly, pray together every day or two and read the Bible together weekly. They do not welcome non-family visitors at least several times per month. So these are faith-based, Bible-believing, Bible-teaching homes, but they don't like people. <laughs> right now, some of you are all like, okay, yeah, I get that. Right, I'm cool with my own family unit. I'm cool with my little household, but do not bring anybody into my circle. Right, I love my pajamas all day. Right, right. I don't want to get gussied up. I don't want to have to clean the house. I don't want to entertain. We'll just do devotions. We'll read the Bible, right? That is those. So again, those are spiritually vibrant. But now we get into the not as good, the hospitable. The hospitable is here. 14% hospitable households welcome non-family visitors several times a month. So these people like people. They're people people. 
They do not talk about God. They do not talk about faith. They do not pray together. They do not read together. Again, Christian homes. This is non-Christians. This is Christian homes. 14% are hospitable, but they don't do the Jesus thing. They don't have the devotional. They don't have habits in the home that would bring God into it. And lastly, 28% would say they're dormant. And that is this. These households do not talk about God, do not talk about faith, do not pray, do not read the Bible together. They do not invite anyone over to their home. This is why we're doing this, because that number is way too big. There are too many. And again, one of the things that I think, and we'll get to this in my last point, even some people who are here in this 33% that said they're devotional, they're not moving up this way. They're not saying, I want to grow. I want to get better. I want to do this more. They're okay with okay. And so for this percentage point over here that all the people who are saying, no, 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 I'm good. We need to get that number up. So lastly, I want to say this. Before I get into my three points, again, some of you are like, lastly, is he wrapping this up? Some of you all excited. You're going, planning your breakfast already. <laughs> Chill out. Hold on. The family, as I said, is under attack. It's under attack from within, entertainment, lack of community. One of the, one of the most, again, I'll, I'll say this just as a caveat, one of the most fundamental places that the family, the household is under attack, I'm gonna tell you what it is, busyness. You're doing so many things, you don't have time for Jesus. So busy doing so busy with sports, extracurricular activities, driving, friends, relationships, that the relationship with Jesus is last or not at all. And so we've got to be very careful of the busyness that can creep in. Because our kids, our kids, I'll just say this as a parent, our kids see what the priorities are. You ask them, ask your kids, take a survey. If you've got kids in the home, take a survey of anybody in the home. Say, what would you say the priorities of this home are? You'll be blown away. Not what you want me to say, but what is, what would you say? Do it an anonymous survey. What would you say that this home stands for? What would you say that we do? So I have one last thing before we dive into the points, and that's a warning. Here's what I want to avoid, and I want you to hear me very clearly. I did not dive into this series because I wanted to condemn anyone. Condemnation is one of the most wicked, nefarious terrible tools that the enemy of our soul uses. And some of you have already heard some stuff that you're just like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. But I want you to understand that the Lord did not call us to go through this or me to teach this because he wants to condemn you. Condemnation is the enemy. If there's conviction that leads to repentance, I'm cool with that. But let me tell you this. And again, I wanna use this. I want you to turn your Bibles, Philippians 3, 13. Again, if you don't want to turn there, it'll be on the screens behind me. But this is the critical nature. I don't want condemnation because as I go through this, there's going to be people who feel condemned, but I want you to know that the old things have passed away. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example that you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with mindset on earthly things. We need to forget the things that are behind. 2022 is over, but you have today. Today is not done. You've got a full day of working on developing new relationships, new habits, new skills that will call us to forget the former things and press on in the upward high calling of Christ Jesus. Don't allow failures of the past to dictate your future. So often Christians, because this is one of the enemy's greatest tools, he ruins your future because he reminds you of your past. That is not what, what, what we want to do. 
Again, there may be some critical things that we touch on that you say, no doubt that you might say, man, I wish I would have done that when I was a parent. I wish I would have done that 20 years ago. I wish I would have started this 10 years ago. I wish I would have started this last year. But again, we're not looking behind, we're looking ahead. From right now, today's a new day. This 10 week series, I pray that you'll be able to look back in due season, that you'll be able to look back and go, I remember when those habits began to develop because I believe as we do this as a community, we have the body of Christ surrounding us. If you're not in a home fellowship, I encourage you to be in one because again, I got discussion questions that we do after these that'll be very critical to this. If you have kids, I'm gonna say this. I, I ask you, you should invite your kids to come into the service with you because the discussion questions that I do are great questions that you can do as a family. Sunday evening, you're like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to have devotions. Just do the discussion questions that I come up with about the study, the one that you heard and they heard. These are easy things that we can begin to do, but we have to do them together. And I think it's critical that we do them together. So what are we pressing on to? Here's kind of the crux. And it's in a sense, the theme verse for this whole series. And it's in Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four through nine. I know a lot of you know this scripture. It's known as the Shema in um, the, the, the kind of Israeli and even the, the, the Jewish and Christian circles. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. This is a recipe for the household. What should our household be? Yes, it's talking about some things that we're to do with our kids, but what it's basically saying is our homes should be filled with scripture and the love of Jesus constantly. From the moment we rise to the moment we go to bed, everything God is doing, we can see because we have our spiritual eyes on. It is so easy. Let me just communicate to you from a, a man who's got four kids at home. It is so easy for us to become distracted from what God is doing because we've got the natural man on all the time. We're not seeing that God is in and through all of these situations in our homes because we're not seeing with spiritual eyes. And in some of you, what the Lord's gonna call you to this series is literally just to be more spiritually sober, spiritually awakened to the things that are going on around you. Because some of you are like, I don't know how this is gonna work. And listen, let me just give you a plug for next week. I believe next week's study is gonna be, again, this is kind of foundational. What we're gonna do next week, I believe is going to be the most critical and beautiful component for you to start flipping the page on some of these Old habits becoming new habits and good habits. Don't miss next week, please. If you, if you, after that, I don't care what you do, but I pray that you come next week and make sure that you get that in because we're really gonna be talking a lot of practical things. But all of these things should be talked about. Your children, you're talking when you sit in your house, you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise, all the time. As we talked about in Proverbs, Proverbs 24, verse three, a house is built on wisdom and becomes strong through good sense. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with all sorts of precious riches and valuables. So there's three takeaways, three points that I got for you as we wrap this uh, study up. If you're taking notes, again, the, the notes are in the CCO app. So if you don't wanna write these down, they're already in there. Number one, start small. One of my kids shall remain nameless, but uh, gave me a beautiful illustration for this idea of starting small. Um, last week, one of my kids said, hey dad, can I have some food? We said, yeah, make it quick. Don't eat too much. Now here's, there, there's like, I don't know if you've ever been a kid and you're super hungry and you just wanna eat a ton. And sometimes you realize that your mouth hole is not sufficiently sized for the amount of food that you wish to place in it. <laughs> Y'all tracking, okay? So we said, go ahead. And then within like a minute, I hear what I think is a child choking. And I look over and indeed they were choking. 
Now, not choking because like they had put it into the air pipe. Their mouth was so full, they couldn't breathe. And it was just too much. Now, I was a little bit like at the moment, I'm like, you okay? At the, the next moment, I was like, that was a waste. Because that was money. Like I just, right? You know, I was just like, I wanted some of that. Not anymore, but I wanted it at the time. But it showed me perfectly that sometimes, and you know this, we bite off more than we can chew. Some of you already, right? You, you, you already did it. You did the, the cliche, I'm going to sign up for the gym. 2023, the year of the gym. Right? You started going to the gym. And, and here's the funny thing about the gym. Like, I, just full disclosure, I used to work out pretty hard. I don't. I know. You're like, no. Anyway. <laughs> I used to work out pretty hard. I used to, you know. But here's the thing. There, there'd be times that, that I get a little soft. And then I'd go back to the gym. And I'd always hit first day of the gym with leg day because I've seen the people who don't do legs, right? You got little toothpicks for legs, big, huge upper body and little, right? I feel like they're gonna fall over. But I'll tell you what, if you've ever done leg day, hard and heavy, it's the worst thing on the planet. Like everyone knows you did leg day because you walk and you're like. I was like, what's wrong with him? Leg day, <laughs> leg day. I remember one time I did bench presses and all these things so much. I got into the shower, I put the bar soap in my hand and I just looked like, I'm not gonna be able to get anywhere. I had to kind of like do, do a little like, get some momentum. My arms didn't work. I went too hard, too heavy, too quick. And then what happens? You get sore and you're like, well, maybe I won't go to the gym this year. <laughs> Right, so we, 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 we go too fast. Some of you, uh, listen, I'll just be very clear. Some of you guys, you haven't read your Bible devotionally, like just to sit to have time with Jesus in years. That's the truth. I know, I know some people that have done that, but I'm not calling you to start reading an hour every day. I'm not telling you to go, you know, let's start preparing your doctoral dissertation in this. <laughs> start with five minutes. Start with a verse. Start with a verse and just ponder it for a while. Lord, what would you want to teach me through this? Don't even go to the Bible per se. Go to a devotional on the Bible. Get some reading material in it about that verse. There's a lot of beautiful devotionals out there. It's just a page. Commit to reading a page. Don't commit to four hours a day. Don't commit to mornings and evenings. Commit to what you know you can do. When you do that, it brings us really, because again, as you see here in uh, Luke 16, if you're faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the large ones. But if you're dishonest in the little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Everything big started small at one point, right? If you think some of the biggest corporations today, like Apple started in a garage, a guy with an idea in a garage, and now it's literally one of the biggest companies on the planet. Amazon lost money for like a decade, but it started with an idea, online bookseller, right? These things all start small. So if you start small, again, it'll breed to greater things. But this leads me to point number two. Point number two, be intentional. The old saying is true. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So many people go into these new years with a failure to plan adequately. Some of you, again, uh, you know, some of you have said to me, Pastor Dan, looks like you're losing weight. I am, thank you. You don't have to clap because it, it'll just as easy come back. It'll go to my head and I'll be like, oh, I deserve a donut. Um, so don't, don't say that. But the truth of the matter is, if you say mentally, I'm gonna lose some weight, but your pantry, your fridge, your freezer are all full of junk food and you didn't deal with that, you know how those intentions go. The moment of weakness that you have in your life will be exposed because those things are readily available to you. You did not intentionally plan. Now, so many people, again, it's uh, I'm going on a diet tomorrow and other lies we tell ourselves. We sometimes even plan, but then we don't plan for the inevitable. I'm hungry and I'm driving. Oh, there's Krispy Kreme. That hot sign gets brighter when you're dieting. Did you know this? Hot and fresh. 
Anytime you pass by a fast food restaurant when you're dieting, it's like, it's a beacon. Satan's like, just a bite, just a small combo. You'll be fine. You're gonna go to the gym tomorrow. It'll all be okay. And other lies we tell ourselves. If we're not intentional about our plans, we're always gonna fail. Some of you guys, you're like, man, I, I'd love to start reading my Bible more, but I, I just don't seem to have time in the morning. That's an excuse. What you should say is, I really wanna spend time with the Lord. I don't make time in the morning, right? There's intentionality to making time. You have just as much time in the day as I do. Nobody here has extra bonus hours. Nobody. We all have the same 24 every single day. What are you doing intentionally with those? I think of the disciples um, when Jesus was um, kind of giving them work in ministry to do and they went to go uh, heal and the demon didn't come out. Remember that? And they go to Jesus like, hey man, I thought you were gonna give us the power to do this. And he just kind of probably, I, I think with kind of that bewildered look, like, come on guys, he said these kind only come out through prayer and fasting which means they weren't intentional about their prayer life. They weren't intentional about fasting. They were just kind of winging it, hoping that it would all work out. And then Jesus said, no, 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 you didn't do the prep work. I want this series to be a whole host of prep work that maybe even you don't change a single habit until all the prep work is done in your heart. And then you begin to make small intentional changes in your life. Because I think that is so critical. I wanna draw your attention to Acts chapter two. Um, in Acts 2.42, again, we read this when we went through um, uh, Acts just recently. Again, it was a while back, but this is such a sweet, sweet scripture. And when you read it, I want you to understand, again, this is what the early church was doing. These were all new habits. None of this stuff was stuff that they were really doing beforehand. I mean, some of it like going to the temple. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. The apostles just started teaching. This is all brand new. And the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers and all came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles and all who believed were together and had things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. Those are brand new habits. And they had to be intentional about them. And think about this, because of their intentionality, we do the same things today. 2000 years later, we are replicating, we are doing, mirroring, mimicking exactly what the early church did because they were intentional about what they were called to do. The apostles teaching, the breaking of bread, fellowship of the saints together. They were intentional about being together as the body of Christ. Some of you guys, the reasons that you don't have healthy habits is because you lack the intentionality. And so I am praying that through this series, you will say, man, I need to, I need to gird up my loins, right? That was an old old world say, because they used to wear these kind of longer tunics. They would wrap the bottom around and gird it up around through their legs. So they're ready, nimble, ready to run, ready to walk, ready to be agile. Again, you cannot go into this. You cannot build any healthy habit lazily, right? Too often we just, at the first sign of opposition, we give up. And again, that's what we're going to be talking a lot about next week. Lastly, number three, build on your success. Again, Luke 16, 10, if you're faithful in the little things, you will be faithful in larger ones. We have all had the beautiful opportunity to have successes in our life, right? There, all of us have built certain habits in our life that we would say are successful, right? Some of you guys, when you were young, when you were teenagers, you didn't wanna take a shower, but your parents were like, no, seriously, if you're gonna live in this home, you will bathe. And you're thankful that they pushed you to that because now it's a beautiful habit that you wouldn't give up for the world, amen? Right, so those are things, but here's the thing. If that's the only success you had and you only showered and the only way you brush your teeth is you just kind of hold your, your, your mouth open to the shower head, 
you'd have a funky mouth. Because that's not going to fix it. That's not going to clean it. We need to build on these successes. When you're successful in one area, you've got to use that as a stepping stone to say, all right, Lord, what's next? Let me be very clear. Too often in the church, those who have been walking with Jesus for a long time, I've seen this. I've seen this in God's people. I've seen this in people here. We, can, we have a tendency to get to a place where we think we've arrived. I made it. God has nothing new to teach me. I got it. And so what happens is it stagnates our growth. We become stagnant. We don't grow anymore. We become the old crabby guy that just yells, get off my lawn. Right? We don't want to do that. We don't want to become the Mr. Wilson in Dennis the Menace. Right? We want to be those who even as we grow in Christ, we say, listen, let me give you a, a, just a tip. If you're still breathing, God's not done with you. If you've got breath in your lungs, you have not attained. There's more that the Lord wants to teach you and grow you in. And so when we look at those past successes, we gotta say, all right, Lord, thank you for the grace that you've given me in this. What's next? What else do you got, Lord? I want more. I want you to pour out more in my life. I want you to pour out more. I think of this uh, very much uh, in th this book that I wrote recently with my friend, Jim Thomas. I gave an illustration about how becoming comfortable and, and stagnating in your faith can be detrimental. I, I likened it to, most of you guys know there, there used to be, and there, there still is, again, it's a, it's a different uh, company now, but you guys remember Kodak? Right? Everybody had the point and click cameras and Kodak. I mean, Kodak was everywhere, sponsored everything. It was the biggest film and camera company on the planet. And there was this, what they would consider a blip on the radar happened. There was this newfangled idea called digital photography. And they heard about it right there in the photo world. They do photos, they know photos, they know photography. So there was this flash in the pan and they were like, digital photography. They said, nothing's gonna happen with that. It's a gimmick. It's not gonna be a real thing. Just ignore it. We need to focus in on our bread and butter, actual film, 35 millimeter film. We need to focus in on these things. You know their story, they went bankrupt. Because everybody else jumped on and said, this thing's gonna be a revolution. And they said, no, no, we just need to rest in what we've done. We just need to take a load off. We got the market. We're the biggest guy in town. Nothing's gonna take us down. They went bankrupt and all their assets went to another company. The Kodak name is still around, but it's not the same company. They rested on what they knew. They didn't look to the future. They didn't see what was coming down the pike. They didn't see what the culture was bringing. They didn't see that the cultural trends were coming to tear their homes apart. For us, we need to understand that cultural trend. That cultural trend is there. It's coming to tear our homes apart. We're not a company, if you will. We're not Kodak. We're God's people. And there's cultural trends that are trying to tear you guys apart. And the only way, one of the only ways that we're gonna combat that is with the Holy Spirit causing us to build better habits. And the world is gonna become strangely dim because of the light of his glory and grace in our lives. As we build these habits in our homes, our church becomes healthier. Our people become more vibrant. You become a beacon of hope in your neighborhood. Like I remember this and I'll just kind of share this to, as a last story to close. Sometimes we can be difficult on our families, right? Anybody here? Can we, we, we can be harder on our families than other people, right? Right, I've all, we've all been there. I remember um, several years ago when uh, I was at a furniture store, I was picking out a couch my wife wasn't there, so it was me, four kids, and they were, they were being a little rambunctious. They were being a little jumpy off the wall. And I, you know, you're in public. So I just, stop it, stop it, stop it. Nah, nah, nah. Sit, 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 right? I feel like you got four puppies. Sit, here's a treat. Here's a phone. I don't care. Stop it. And this sweet lady, it was one of the sales ladies, she came up to me and she goes, don't be so hard on them. And I was like, mm, you know, is that bad? She goes, no, meaning, she goes, I see a lot of families come through here. Your kids are so well-behaved. 
and they listen to you. I was like, oh, <laughs> how many couches should I buy? You know, you get commission, right? I'll take all of these. Yeah. But I think sometimes we can become so hard and we, we're, we're, we're trying to develop habit, habits, excuse me, to make ourselves look better. And I don't want to do that. I want us to be a glorious representation of Christ and his kingdom. I want our homes to be a reflection of Christ and his kingdom so that our neighbors go, what's going on there? I want our kids to be raised as disciples of Jesus Christ. So when they grow old, they say, man, my church loved Jesus. My family loved Jesus. They, they pointed me to Jesus every single day. They wrote it on the doorposts of my heart and my home. We need to develop these, church, or the culture will destroy us. God is good, amen? amen? Father, I thank you for the work that you do. And God, I pray for this series. I truly, God, you know my heart that it will challenge us to not just be okay with okay. That we would challenge ourselves to become more spiritually vibrant. That we do the hard work now. All things, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God, we forget those things that are behind and we press on. That upward high calling in Christ Jesus is what we need to press on to, God. And so I pray for even those who, who just, it doesn't matter how many times I say it, they're still feeling the condemnation from the enemy, God, that they would no longer feel condemned. But they would say, today's a new day. What do I need to do to be the disciple of Jesus you called me to be today in my home? God, I pray that you would just minister to your people. God, that this would be an encouraging series, that people would come and go, man, I wanna do that. I wanna get better at that. And God, they would start small, but they'd be intentional on those small changes. And before they know it, there's big, amazing changes that are going on in their lives. God, I pray for those who've had beautiful habits for years, but have gotten stagnant in their growth. They stopped growing because they think they've arrived. God, help them even through this series to know there's a lot more that you have for them. God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen, why don't you guys stand up, we're closing this last song.
amen and amen, church. I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of a homework assignment, something to be intentional. I want you to take away something today. I, I'm gonna ask that you do this. Again, it's gonna be maybe a little weird for some of you, but I think it's a great first step of being intentional. It's a small step. Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four through nine. I read them already. Pray those over your home sometime this week. Probably today, because tomorrow you're gonna forget. By next week, you'll be like, oh, that's right, right? Pray that over your home. Maybe even say something like, God, I don't know what all this entails, and I'm not even sure I'm gonna be able to do it, but I need to start somewhere. And if this is the small step of just praying this over my home or just saying, hey, we need to work on this, I know, but Lord, do what you will in my home, then do that. We're gonna be talking a lot of uh, different topics through this series quiet time, screen time, intentional time together, family time, play time. There's gonna be a lot of different things that we talk about. But I just pray that you'd start small, start today. Pray those things over your home. Church, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Come, come on again because I'm really excited for this and I hope you are too. God bless you, church. We'll see you soon.